Hey everybody, NFI Hammer here, a beginner in the miniature painting hobby. Today I am going to be painting my third ever Tyranid ever, a winged Tyranid Prime. I will also be using contrast paints, or at least two of them, for the very first time, as well as trying out some sandpaper. Let's get started. So first we have to build the model. Unfortunately, they don't come pre-assembled. This model was fairly straightforward. It's a pushpin model, as most of the ones that come in the box sets are. I didn't actually end up using any glue on this, um, although I know all the professionals glue it for a better fit. I'm also using some sandpaper, which is a new kind of strategy I'm trying. I'm not really sure if it really works or helps or not, but I've been really struggling to get the mold lines off. So I use my Wraithbone spray here. I did a whole video comparing Wraithbone versus just your cheap white primer, and I really couldn't find any benefit with this. But since I'd already bought it, I thought I should use it. I did notice that it was quite powdery. You can't really see it here in the video. I'm not sure if that was just because we were having a really exceptional heat wave at the time, or I don't really know. So if you let me know in the comments why you think that is, that would be great. So I'm gonna go over it again with a dry brush of Wraithbone. This is just to color match it with the color out of the pot, as well as I was hoping cover some of the weird powdery texture. Then I use my Juchi Violet. Uh, this is a shade color. It makes the skin look very kind of pink purpley, which is not really what the box art has. It has a much paler skin, but I kind of like it. It does look very intense on it initially, but when we start painting the carapace and stuff later, it actually kind of looks lighter. If that makes sense by comparison. And I'm just trying to get it in all the grooves. You can see I've left the wings detached just because I find it's a lot easier to paint when it's separate and you can kind of get into the body, you can get into the underside of the wings. I really don't see any point in gluing them on um, until it's painted, but I know some people don't like that strategy and they only paint what they can see. So this is my very first contrast paint. I've never used contrast paint before, and I've got two pots that I use in this video, and this is Gulliman's Flesh, and I'm just painting the wings, and it kind of gives it a leathery texture, and the contrast paint kind of pulls into the crevices to create that dark color. And then I'm doing a bad and black for the tips. So these are kind of like the claws, uh, you know, the tough, indestructible kind of um, weapons of the Tyranid army. So I'm just painting them all black. There's quite a few hidden away in the back of the claws and back of the hooves and everything. So there's quite a bit to get to. And then I also color in the mouth and the eyes just so that later when we come and paint it again, it's kind of got a dark background. Next up is the Phoenician purple. So this is the darker purple I was talking about before that kind of makes the skin tone look much more normal in comparison. I'm just trying really carefully not to get any paint onto the actual skin. Um, I think I do an okay job. I'm still pretty new <laughs> at all this stuff and I make heaps of mistakes. So once that's done, I'm using Phalanx Yellow for the eyes, just to kind of give it a bit of a kind of eerie um, bug glow. For some reason I keep trying to get paint off my thumb, not take it off, but because my skin's so dry in this weather, uh, it doesn't really work, so I have to go back to the pot. And I do end up putting way too much into this eye on the right side, which is really annoying, but the left one looked pretty good. Then I use Bugman's Glow for the tongue. I was told that you should never use a colour only once on a model, but I don't know what other colour to paint the tongue that I'm already using on the model. It is also kind of a very muted-ish colour. Maybe a bright pink or something would be more interesting, um, but this is just what I had. 
And then I'm going to Wraith Bone again for the teeth. So now that we painted them black earlier, you can just kind of come in and just paint the very tips white. You can use a brighter color like Corax White or um, that other one, but I like this color because it kind of looks like a bone color and it looks a little bit more natural for teeth. They're not American teeth that are like fluoro white. <laughs> These are alien teeth. And this is the second contrast paint that I was talking about, Doomfire Magenta. So I'm trying to paint where the claws are coming out of the skin with this color to kind of make it look like the skin's like, you know, the nails protruding from it. However, I should have watered it down or diluted it. I don't have any contrast medium. Um, so it is a little bit brighter uh, than I originally intended it to be. At first I really hated this and I was like, I've ruined the model, I've got to start again. But over time it did grow on me. Then I'm using Fire Dry Dragon Bright to paint in the air vents. So you may notice in these Tyranid model, there's these little weird slits um, all over the arms and legs and stuff. Originally, I thought they were like gills or some sort of like breathing apparatus, but apparently yeah, they're air vents for some reason in the physiology. And I just paint it orange. There's no reason for it. It's definitely not on the box art, but I just find that it kind of gives it a little bit more color to the model and also gives it a little bit more of an alien vibe. Um, I don't mind it. It kind of works in my head, but feel free, you know, if you're following along to just choose whatever color, or you can just leave it the plain color. I think that's what they do on the box art. Then I've got some Nuln oil, which I usually use on my Necrons, but here I just noticed the purple was kind of all one color and it doesn't look very natural for an organic creature to just be you know exactly the same color so i'm just kind of putting it on the you know spikes that come out and the horn at the top as well as just like a little bit all over just to kind of create a little bit of variance and darken it up slightly and then this is another color paint mechanicus standard gray that i got in the imperium magazine and I'm just using that to try and edge highlight the claws, but I do a horrible job and I get paint like all over it. For some reason with this brush, this is like the Citadel starter brush, it just wasn't working. <laughs> uh, I was, this is maybe the worst edge highlighting I've ever done. But I picked this gray color because it's got a little bit of green or something in it. I'm not quite sure, but it's not like a bright gray, like Storm Vermin fur which was going to be my second choice. So I'm just trying to pick out any highlights from the hooves. So then I've got two colors, Gene Stealer Purple and T'Challa Lilac. And I'm trying to use like a feathering technique here. So I go 40, 30, 40% up each little blade or um, segment of the chest with the Gene Stealer. And then I come back and do like the last 10, 15% uh, with the T'Challa lilac and it just kind of creates like an edge highlight but for like this carapace kind of bug stuff but I really like this technique because it's kind of idiot proof so I can do it versus like a normal edge highlighting if it's any like inconsistencies it looks really bad but on this any inconsistencies kind of work because it's kind of a natural organic material so I really recommend it for beginners like myself. If you want to do some edge highlighting, kind of use this technique. Um, but if it's not really for you, just feel free to skip over it. And another hack that I heard was that you can put some technical art code, which I had lying around and just put that over the nails. And this kind of lets the natural light reflect back on it and just gives it a little bit more of a highlight effect. This is what the model looks like when it's completed. I really enjoyed some of the interesting details on these Tyranids and it was really refreshing to paint one after painting so many Necrons. 
At first, I really kind of felt there was something off about the model and it just didn't sit right. But the more I look at it, the more I'm like, oh, it's pretty cool. I think I did an okay job. If you think I did an okay job too, or you just want to support me, please consider leaving a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. Anyway, thanks for watching and I hope you join me next time. See ya. Bye.